Dr. Bart Lardner is a research scientist at the Western Beef Development Center, a division of the Prairie Agricultural Machinery Institute specifically focused on the Western Canadian cattle industry. Located just outside of Lanigan, Saskatchewan, Lardner says most of their work is on helping beef producers manage and feed their herds profitably. The big focus of Western Beef is applied research and so really it's all about uh, research we do, uh, we put an economic value towards it and is it applicable to the producer. Can he look at that information and take it home and adopt it and hopefully absorb it into his day-to-day -day operation. Here we see Tremundi Research Ranch Assistant Manager Crystal Savankov moving this research cow herd into a new corn paddock. Lardner says they've been researching various aspects of winter corn grazing here for about 15 years. But this group of 140 cows are corn grazing right now simply because it's a productive and cost-effective winter feeding program. Of course, before you even plant a corn crop, you need to consider soil fertility. We look at a soil test first, first and foremost in that field. Where do you, what are you starting with? And then we'll top it up to that 100, 120 pounds per acre mark. Um, certainly corn is a big end user. <clears throat> but if you have cattle out there grazing in the wintertime, they're going to be depositing manure nutrients. And so take that into consideration that there will be available nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur from those manure nutrients for the next growing crop. When they first started growing corn for grazing here, Lardner told us they were using older American varieties which required up to 3,000 corn heat units. Since this region gets significantly fewer heat units on average, those varieties perform poorly here. Fortunately, corn breeders have made major advances since then. But today, with the corn companies uh, introducing these varieties that are 2050 to 2150, there are certainly crops that can produce two and a half to three times the biomass that your small grain cereal would produce, and so that's why they're attractive to beef producers. But Dr. Lardner says newer corn varieties have improved in other areas as well. For instance, weed management has become a lot easier and more efficient. And that's important because in order to get a good stand of corn, you need to keep the weeds out of it. The early varieties we worked with 15, 20 years ago, we had to use cocktail mixes, atrazine and other types of herbicide to control grassy and broadleaf weeds. Uh, so tank mixing several herbicides, certainly a problem for a beef producer who is not a farmer. Today with these Roundup Ready varieties, weed management is pretty straightforward. In this part of the world, general wisdom suggests corn meant for winter grazing should be ideally planted by mid-May. But Lardner says soil temperature is more important than the actual planting date. Corn needs a soil temperature of at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit to get a good start. Otherwise, the seed is just going to sit there and be dormant. Here at Western Beef, have even seeded uh, June 9th and June 11th, and we've had a fantastic crop. So I think it's really all about timing the, the soil temperature, timing the right date. In order to be successful in winter corn grazing, Lardner says you need to make sure the cattle respect the electric fence. They are giving these cows one acre of corn grazing at a time, which usually lasts three or four days. Lardner believes this gives the cow enough time to do a relatively good job of cleaning up the field. They find on average their cows usually leave about five to ten percent residue after grazing. Have enough cows out there so that they will clean up better. Uh, too few cows won't clean up as much and so there's the right number between 140 and and maybe 300 cows in one group, I think, is, is where there's a comfortable level where they can actually maximize utilization of the crop. Lardner says rumen upset, also known as acidosis, is something producers need to be aware of when getting cattle started on corn grazing. But he says in 15 years of corn grazing here at Western Beef, they have not lost any cows to acidosis, probably because they watch them closely and practice good management. For example, they encourage the cows to consume all parts of the corn plant. Why? Because they are going to go out and select certain parts of the plant and they're going to select the cobs. They're like in the ice cream part of the plant right off. Right away they're going to get a high intake of starch in that first 24 hours and so in day two and three we're asking them to consume the stalk, the leaf, the husk, the stover and that's the fibrous part of the plant. And so that kind of bounce off that, uh, you know, that fluctuations of starch intake versus fiber intake. 
Having access to hay can help the cows transition to corn grazing, according to Lardner. Over the course of their extensive corn grazing research thus far, their average feeding cost has ranged from $0.70 cents to $1.40 per cow per day. As is the case with any winter feeding system, it's important to have a backup feeding plan in case it doesn't work out for your herd. Lardner admits that some cows don't adapt as well to winter corn grazing as others. He says in order for them to get a better understanding as to why, research in this area is ongoing.